welcome to Ghost Prime Reviews. Today we'll be taking a look at War for Cybertron Siege 6 Gun. He is the second Autobot Weaponizer Deluxe Class figure, and he is a companion to Metroplex. Now, in the Siege line, uh, there is no Metroplex. He is kind of a add-on, if you would say, to the Titan Metroplex. He is a bit small for that, like you can't use any of his guns as the main guns for Metroplex, like you could in the G1 figure. Uh, he is comprised of a bunch of different weapons, which is why he's called Six Gun. He did have one cartoon, I believe, and one episode of the cartoon of the G1 series. I'm not sure about the comics. Uh, I'm still reading through the Marvel comics. Uh, he is a really nice looking robot mode and has a really nice homage to the Generation 1 vintage version of Six Gun that originally came with that Metroplex. He's not without his flaws. There's a couple tolerance issues I have with him, um, which I will, I will go over. So without any further ado, let's get to the review. Okay, let's start things off with taking a look at his box. His box is very standard for the Siege line. Has the same graphics, Siege, War for Cybertron Trilogy, name here, Six Gun. Uh, awesome artwork on the side, as always. I really dig these artwork, the artwork on the sides of these. These are fantastic, fantastic pieces. Uh, they really display well. It does have a bit more of the, that lettering on the side that is that you could see more in a black light or a certain shine on it. And on the back, we have the images of the figure inside the box. So one thing to note here, which is fairly interesting, right here is his head. His head is red, but it's not showing up red here. It's showing up white. So I wonder if this was an early model where his head was originally white. Also, again, the white head shows up in the ship mode here. So on, on the side, they show a couple of things you could do with them here, and this is with Ironhide. Unfortunately, they don't have Ironhide as of yet. So on the bottom of the box, with a bunch of words and stuff. Top of the box, at the Autobot logo, and a little hook to hang it with. All right, moving on to Six Gun himself. So he looks fantastic in robot mode. He is packaged like this. He has... Really, really nice detailing that we've come to expect with the uh, Siege line. A couple of things I do like is, get up close in here, is, so his his arm here, and you see the little the peg right there, his arm can straighten out because it's hollow right there. This is a really, really smart use of a hollow arm is to have it be able to straighten out like that. And another thing, if you look at the design, so this was a one of the original Metroplex's guns, the shape of it, on the G1. It had a little part here and a longer piece here. And they just made the smaller part his arm, which was really cool. I will show you that in the comparison. I just needed to point that out. It's really rad. It's something I really like. Beautiful coloration. Um, he does have, what's what interesting interests me a little bit is that his, in the cartoon, his forearms here were red and not white and here they went with a white i do like the coloration on this i love the fact that he has a he turns into a, a ship because this does look like a cockpit even on the generation one he has these little ports here so you could put the blast effects on him if you want him to get shot so he could you could put one on here like he's getting shot in the chest or the, uh, the upper arm there. Or, of course, blast effects for the weapons. So, yeah, definitely cool figure. He's decently articulated. He has a full 360 swivel for the waist. He has thigh swivels, ankle tilts, toes, 90 degrees at the knee. He has, oh, that's hard to do without pulling it off. 90 degrees at the elbow. Let's stick that back on there. Full 360 on the shoulder. And his shoulder can go up and down, but it cannot go in and out. 
His head can rotate 360. It is not on a ball joint. It feels like it's more on a mushroom peg. His legs should go forward. The front splits and the side splits. So all in all, you can get some decent posing out of this guy. His robot mode is quite, quite brilliant. Love the way it looks. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm about to get the camera focused there. So let's uh, do a little comparison here. So here is the current Siege 6-gun compared to the... Let's get them all in the camera there. Generation 1, 6-gun. So as you can see, the Generation 1 version is quite a lot taller. But he has a lot of the detail. So if you look, see this cockpit? See this area here? Almost looks like a cockpit. Very cool. The vents, looks like he has uh, like grenades you can shoot out of here. Here, of course, are empty, but it's still the, the design's there. He has the same basic layout for the face. Of course, it has a lot less detail. It's really, really nice, nice homage to it. So what I was saying about the arms is see this little piece here against the, the longer black piece? That's kind of how these are made. These are these little things that I really appreciate in a lot of design. Like, I'm not sure if anybody else notices these, but I really notice this stuff. This is something that I've come to really appreciate in the designers. Uh, even, even this little divot here is right there. It's the same shape. In the, in the foot area. The little pegs here. These have the little pegs for the guns on the back too. Just amazing little details. Amazing little details are, that are on this figure. Here he is next to Siege Optimus Prime. Here he is next to Cog from the Siege line. And, as you can already see, he is, here he is, with Titan Metroplex. Now, if one thing, his color, see if you can see, the camera actually makes it look closer, it does in real life. The color doesn't really match. It actually is a darker red, almost like the Generation 1 version. You see the color doesn't quite match. I would love to have matched this color on the character. It looked like on the box it was a bit brighter. Um, so it probably at one point did match. So one of the cool things about this guy is he does fit on this figure. Let's see if I could pull back to show you these ports, which are the right size to fit these, the pegs from six gun in. He has a few on his arms. Which is cool that you could actually fit six gun on your generation's Metroplex. All right, let's get into transformation. So he is a parts former, as one would expect. So the first thing you're going to want to do is take off his arm guns, and then lift up the cockpit. Unpeg these from these uh, sides of his chest from the from the sides of the body here. Move the guns down a little bit. Just pull that right off. So you have this piece, and what you want to do is turn his head around. The back flap comes up, and you see a little groove for the crest on his head there. Move it up. That comes back. Cockpit goes flat. Towards his uh, flush towards his head here in the back of the head. Then you take these off of the bottom part. Take all the little finger like things here, move them straight up like so. And then the legs actually turn the waist around. Then the legs come up and pay these little pegs. Peg into the not the little pegs are on the notch, like that. Knees go down. Toe flaps cover the or point, like so. 
Okay, now take the guns and put them in through the little slots, or the pegs into the holes there on either side of the wings, like so. Put it backwards. Take the little guns that were on the finger things, but stick them in the front here facing forward. And then finally, you take the peg, stick it in the hole there, and you have his, looks like a ship mode. So you've got thrusters in the back, guns in the front, tons of guns, actually six forward facing guns. And he's a pretty cool little ship. He actually looks really cool. Too bad the Generation 1 can't do this. It's pretty neat. Now, of course, one of the uh, draws to these weaponizer figures is that you could do anything you want with them. As far as any configuration, there's a few official ones, um, which you could choose to look at the instructions and do or not. It turns into a backpack, turns into like a Doom Glove. Uh, you could do a few different things. So the parts that he does come with, come apart, are these. So he has two leg pieces. Hang on, let me get it all apart and show you. This is the main waist, which has these four barrels on it, which could move up or down. His waist piece, if you go like this or like that, of course, he has all the same articulation in the hips and the, the these little pegs here. He has a peg, a peg hole there. He actually has a peg right here, so you can actually just use this as a gun if you so desire. Uh, I will show you... Uh, the Doom Fist. So the Doom Fist is kind of neat. It doesn't use all these parts. Well, let me adjust the camera. So like I said, it doesn't use all these parts, but it is kind of neat. So what you want to do is take this piece here, move these fingers down like this, take this part, move it kind of, this is as far as it goes, it'll go any further. Then you move these and face them this direction. These little pegs are the facing that way and then you rotate the fingers so they're facing the same direction you have it like that then you take the main body component and move it like this so this put this piece back up there's a exposes a peg there and there's a peg here so this peg comes up pushes into there, and then you can attach the fist to the arm of a deluxe, or say like with Optimus Prime, put it in his fist here, and Optimus Prime could have a giant fist of doom. And that's one of his modes. So as I was saying, he has a lot of parts. He has a lot of different things you could do with it. Like these two guns here. These could be guns for him or guns for other characters. These are the back guns. Like the, the back legs or the the guns of the original six gun would be the main guns for Metroplex. They have gun they have pegs that come down like this, which could be held in a figure, of course, in any 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 area. So if you want Prime to hold one of Metroplex's guns, you can. Oh, that's one of the problems I have with this. One of these does not fit in the hole and likes to fall off. See, that one's there. Works well. Can't shake it loose. This other one, for some reason, it's really loose in there. And it's like that for both, both of these. So there are some tolerance issues. It's a little tighter in there, but still, see, it's really, really wiggly, really loose. As to where this one fits in there really nicely. Uh, that is a problem. Also with the feet. So there's one mode where these, like all the weaponizers, could go lay flat. And you just put on the bottom here. Now this, as you see, does not stay on. And it doesn't stay on either hole. But... The other leg, other other leg pieces will stay on. So not all sizes are created equal on this, which is a problem. 
it does have it does affect its playability. That is an issue with mine. Let me know if it's an issue with yours. So this guy also has a couple different modes where you can stick these little guns on these different sides here. To have like a, an arm shield gun thing. Six gun can even enhance your Metroplex via multiple peg holes on the Titan figure. You see I have the six guns legs there on either side of his shoulder here by, by that mount and on the other shoulder. So you could get a very, very weaponized Titan. Very cool. Works with the uh, Titan Metroplex very neatly. So he can, you could do pretty much anything you want to with the parts to this figure. Anything you could possibly imagine or anywhere these would fit. This is an awesome, awesome benefit of having these weaponizers in your collection. They really enhance playability for these characters. So, for my final thoughts on this guy. All right, that was Warp of Cybertron Seed 6 Gun. He's a good figure. He looks fantastic in robot mode. I do wish that his colors match the Titan class Metroplex a little bit more than the Generation 1 character. Either way, I'm really glad to have him as a companion in my Titans. It kind of brings up a weird thing. So some of the Titans are missing some of the pieces. Like, like we know that we're getting the tank part for Trypticon. So now if that would be the third weaponizer. So now with those three, what do you guys think of Hasbro and Takara releasing parts that originally went with the characters as separate figures instead of with the figures themselves originally? It does add a bit of extra cost and kind of make me feel like my character or my collection isn't complete without it. Like I need to get it and now that to have my uh, Titan class Metroplex complete as it wasn't complete before. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. He is a great figure. I also like Cog. They're both good. Um, uh, they bring a lot to the line. It looks fantastic. Bring a lot of playability to the rest of the figures of Siege Line. So there's more than just an add-on to the figure. So that's why I'm on the fence. It is great. Shouldn't have came with the original. Let me know your thoughts. And also, I'll be back soon with another review. So please, like, subscribe, ring the bell if you want notifications. And I'll see you guys later.